This is Michael Orl of MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me the 2009 edition of the T-Mobile Sidekick LX. This is the high-end Sidekick offering from T-Mobile. has a lot of new features, a lot of good stuff in it this time around, and you can see we've got to start with an 854 by 480 pixel display with a 3.2 inch diagonal measurement. We've got a 3.2 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. GPS built in, 3.5mm headphone jack and regular volume controls right here, power switch, mini USB for charging, and data. Just like on other Sidekick devices for the last couple of years, we've got both a D-pad and a trackball for navigation, which is pretty nice. Up on the top of the device, we have two shoulder buttons. This one here doubles as the camera shutter button, so it's two-stage. You can press it in partially to get focus and the rest of the way to take the picture and just a regular button here. On the four corners of the device are different controls. This one brings up the menu, this one brings up the home screen, this is OK, and this is cancel. Now, of course what Sidekick would be complete without flip-up display and a full query keyboard. And of course we have such on this device. Uh, the thing is though, on this keyboard uh, the keys are a little bit shallow when this is to, in order to make the device thinner overall but it also has this strange font that we've seen before. Yeah, I really just dislike it. I think it makes it hard to read the characters. I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish with this. You know, when you're reading it casually, it's obvious what the letters are, but when you're scanning quickly, it's just a little hard to pick up on. It just makes the keyboard much more difficult to use than it would need to be otherwise, because otherwise it has pretty good feel in, in spite of the fact that it's really just raised rubber bumps on a rubber sheet. I'm pretty pleased with the back of the device. You can see it has these nice ridges, making it a little bit easier to hold. The paint is uh, kind of a soft touch. It's not real soft, but it, it definitely has a little bit of a thick feel to it that I, I really appreciate. Pretty thin device overall. Uh, it's kind of heavy though, 160, 161 grams, uh, 5.7 ounces or so. So it's not small by any stretch, but it, but it is still pocketable. And of course, you know, the flip-up display with the little T-Mobile Sidekick LX advertisement on the back. We're going to take a look at the jump screen here. This is the home screen for the device and where all the main categories of applications and functionality can be found. Now you notice when I use the trackball here, it moves up and down a single option. By default, the D-pad is set to move in terms of pages. So you can scroll up and down large numbers of items. It also works in other applications. You can switch the D-pad around though, configure it so as it works the same as the trackball. I'm going to show you a couple different themes on the device and while we're doing that we're going to show you how the menu system works. I'm going to hit the menu button up here in the upper left hand corner of the device. That's going to bring up a context sensitive menu based on where I am. In this particular case I'm at the, you know, the home screen, the jump menu. You can see there's a themes item right here and if I move to the right on the D-pad or the trackball it's going to open up a sub-menu. And we'll switch to and pick a different theme here. We'll pick this Bailey theme so you can see what it looks like. Go back and we'll change to a different one, such as Slate. And we'll go back to our default theme, Sachet. Now when you're inside a menu, we'll bring it up again, you can always hit this button here, the Cancel button, just to back out of whatever you're doing. While this does happen to be T-Mobile's first 3G sidekick, uh, 3G signal in our area is kind of spotty, so sometimes you may see that we're on a regular data connection, sometimes you may see the 3G connection like it just popped up right this moment. I'm going to pull up the web browser and I've got Yahoo Finance running. And certain sites look pretty good on the sidekick's web browser. You can use the D-pad to control zooming. Sometimes a little slow, but in general it works pretty well. Switch to a different site. Go into bookmarks here. See a lot of pre-done bookmarks. I'm going to pull up the Mobile Burn site. We've got the Mobile Burn website loaded now, and you can see that there are some real problems here. We're going to zoom out, make it a little bit easier to see. but. You can see a lot of things have gone wrong with the rendering. Uh, this is worse than most other real HTML web browsers we've seen recently. 
We've got the mobile version of the YouTube site pulled up right now. Um, the videos don't work on the full desktop version, so you have to use this mobile version. Uh, and as such, the videos work through a streaming connection, which of course requires a little bit of buffering. I have in my hands here the new 2008 Sidekick. You see the URL at the bottom of this tier eventually. Aspect ratio really and everything looks just fine in this because it's just shot in a normal 4x3 aspect ratio. But the uh, problem is when you get to a widescreen video, like you know, the HD browsing, videos we've been shooting lately, you'll see that they get squashed and look funny. Now this video was shot in HD in a 16x9 format and you can see everything's very squashed looking. Uh, so even though it's a widescreen display and a widescreen video, it's still showing it in this you know, small area which makes it all squashed just as if you were doing the same kind of thing on a television or something. It's, it's a little annoying considering so many videos today on YouTube are uh, widescreen. When it comes to navigating in the browser, the two shoulder buttons up here handle the back and forward tasks. So you can see if I press this left button here, it'll automatically go back to the prior page.